So, and that's the next thing he talks about. Uh, you want the lowest terms representation. So uh, how do you do that? And we're going to we're going to use a method that's already been developed. It's actually uh, a method developed around the B zero BC called Euclid's algorithm. Uh, and it basically ha here's the information on it. But this is how you implement it. So we can just trust it works. Now the way this particular method works is you have to define it outside of your class. So we're going to just copy it. And the book doesn't point that out clearly, but I'm going to define it before I start the fraction class. So basically you give it two, uh, uh, basically a numerator and denominator, and actually it's going to find the common denominator. So you give it two numbers and it's going to find the common denominator. Uh, so it, it, uh, it's basically, you see there's a loop, and it loops until it has a certain condition, and then finally it returns in. And then you divide in into both parts of the fraction to reduce it. So if you have six eighths, it's going to return two. And you return you divide six by two and eight by two to get the new fraction. So that's how you actually use it. So then when we do our add, after we've done this, we want to actually uh, then pass the, we want to say new fraction. We want to divide this by this number. So let's compute the common denominator. Lowest common denominator. Lowest common denominator equals GC greatest common. Oh, it's the greatest common denominator. Sorry, greatest common denominator is equal to. Oh, we can't call it the same thing as a method. Uh, we just call X. DCD uh, new numerator. Um, a new denominator. There we go. And so what we're going to do is divide these by x. Now let's mention something here. Uh, in old Python, you could just divide by x, but you remember these are integers. So if you divide by x, the the slash will convert it to a floating point. So we need two slashes. This is actually called true divide. Um, and x. So now when we run it, you'll see it's three quarters. Now in the exercise you're doing, uh, you really need to do this everywhere you create a new fraction. So you're going to move this step where you reduce the fraction to the lowest common denominator, and you're going to move it up to and put it in a knit. So you want to think about that. Uh, so whenever you do a knit, the top and bottom you're going to reduce it just like we did here before you, you uh, store them in the, the new object. And then everywhere that we're using GCD, you don't have to do it because it'll happen whenever you create a new fraction. Notice the way it does the add, it's adding two fractions together, creating a new denominator, denominator, new numerator and denominator, but then it's actually creating a new object and returning the new object. It's not returning some modification of one of the objects on the left or right of the plus. And that's what you'd want. A plus, when you add two numbers together, it doesn't modify the original numbers. So this, you want to create a new number here, a new fraction. Okay. So now, just like uh, you did add, you can do other magic methods. And part of the assignment you're going to do is basically adding all the rest of the magic methods you would want for fractions. Uh, so you can do equality, that's which is equal equal testing of two fractions are equal. You can do greater than or less than. Uh, there's a whole bunch of magic methods you can do. Uh, so the next one we're going to do is equal, which is this is going to implement equals equals. So basically, we want to get the uh, uh, equal equal uh, if they're both reduced to the lowest common denominator. Uh, then they're equal if the numerators are the same and the denominators are the same. Uh, in this code, they don't assume that. So they, they set the first number to the uh, numerator times the other denominator, and the second number to the numerator times the other denominator. Right? Yeah, you see the, the other and self are different. And then they check if they're the same. 
So what they're doing here is getting a common uh, base. So basically they're looking at the two numerators uh, with a common base. So you remember the step we did for add uh, up here? So how are they doing equal? They're basically doing this operation and this operation on the two fractions. They have a common base and once they have a common base they can just compare AD to CB and that's what they're doing in the equals. So let's go ahead and implement it. And you notice that returning a boolean it checks is the first number equal to the second number. And so we add that to after this method. And then do a little indenting. And this method is not indented very well either. Let's see. I think I have GCD. Okay. Let's run this. Make sure we have no errors. Okay, that seems to be working. So now we have, we know F3 is 3 quarters. Let's actually print is F3 equal to a new fraction that has uh, 3 quarters. And that should say true. Oops. Uh, it says a nip missing one required positional bottom. Let's see what happened here. Oh, I said three slash quarters. We have to say three comma because they're separate parameters. And it says true, so it's working. Now in the uh, test code you're going to run, it has a bunch of tests that test if everything's working. So if you actually wanted the test if things are working, instead of just printing out that this is true, you can do a special statement called an assert statement. And the way the assert statement works is uh, you basically have a cert and you can have a message. Uh, let's see, equal magic method seems broken. So you have a method, a message. So what happens here is you can test your code. I create some fractions, I do some math, and then I test is F3 equal equal to fraction three quarters and if it is it's not going to do anything it skips the assert but if it isn't uh, it'll give an error so let's run it and see what happens so it should just print true again oh we're not printing anything so you see nothing happens but if we uh, change this to expect that it's one quarter it's going to fail because it's not equal to one quarter so you get actually an error message and it says assert F3 equals fraction one quarter equal magic method seems broken. And then you get an assertion error and it gives out the message you put in quotes. Uh, so if you add these assertions, you can actually build up special code to check out that your code you're writing is correct. Uh, this is called uh, testing. And in this case, since we're testing just our class, it's a form of testing called unit testing. Uh, if we have time, later in the class we'll show you a more formal way of unit testing using a library that's designed for that, which is very common for a lot of languages now to use the same techniques. Okay, so that's good on that uh, video before we go into some more. So look, we're going to have some several videos on uh, classes, and we're also going to show you some extra things that are not in the book on classes.